So, with my content, the past couple videos, I have touched on the topic of pornography and masturbation, specifically the idea of its harmful effects and being addicted of it, being addicted of it, being addicted to it. And I just thought of something kind of randomly and connected the dots, and it made me realize how deep this rabbit hole goes in terms of the effects that these things can have on people. So, me personally, I, have, I was exposed at a very young age, and I started partaking of spanking the monkey and watching the funky at a pretty young age. Iced Americano. And luckily for me, I never dwelled into really weird stuff. I mean, there was pr definitely phases where you kind of have to up the ante because how your dopamine works is all this pornography and stimulation is just artificially squashing your dopamine baseline down. So eventually you feel like to get the same amount of pleasure and excitement, you kind of need to up the ante with the content you're watching or whatever you're doing. But it never went so bad that I dress up as a dog and go to conventions and meet other dog people or bear people or horse people to have sex with them. Yes, we're going to be talking about the whole concept of furries. Now, obviously, furries have just been an amazing source of cringe on the internet for as long as time can go on. I was first uh, exposed to the idea of furries when I was younger and the whole My Little Pony brony thing was going on. I mean, just thinking about that, just thinking about grown men being obsessed with a show about ponies that is made for young female girls. Female girls, that's very redundant of me. What, do I not know how to talk anymore? Come on, Kenny, you're embarrassing yourself on the YouTubes. Anyhow. So, like I was saying, porn addiction squashes down your baseline dopamine to get that same pleasure you need to up the ante, yada, yada, yada. And we see this in a lot of different ways. People start watching more extreme pornography. People start getting gadgets or doing weird stuff down there to up the stimulation. And I think furry is one of the far deep down um, effects now, I think there's kind of two camps. I think one camp, this is a direct result of overindulging of over of the of the addiction going too far off the rocker. However, I think this is also a manifestation of very young people, children getting exposed to these things at a young age and then they're developing with the addiction and the exposure to these things and thus for them it kind of makes it doesn't make sense, but it just tickles their fancy after years and years of doing this stuff to, oh, wow, th this, this is an animation of a horse doing it and a doggy. Whoa, I can wear the costumes and, pr and identify as an animal? So, and I guess there's also an end, uh, a realm of people who are simply have mental illnesses or trauma that they can't work through, and this is kind of a manifest manifestation of that into their lifestyle and their reality. However, I would still argue in 99% of cases, uh, furries also have some sort of extreme pornographic addiction almost every single time. I actually have an interesting story regarding, I guess, uh, younger kids getting exposed to that. So my brother, he's two years younger than me. He graduated school in 2021. He had a kid, I believe it was in his grade, who this kid was... And I don't mean to say this in a bad way because I feel like a bully just saying this, but he was more of a social outcast. Um, definitely not looked upon favorably by any women whatsoever. And the, whatever the popular kids consist of in his grade, definitely didn't want to interact with him. He's just, he's one of those kids. We all know kids like that when we go to school. And my brother would tell me stories of like them kind of taking his phone and like finding porn or whatever. But eventually... They, he said they would find more weird stuff and they would kind of pick on him for it. Be like, oh, you like this? You like this? And he's like, no. And eventually got to the point where he was interested in like, it, this, is a, this is a young boy, and he got interested in chubby men, 
which is very interesting. Um, however, it eventually evolved into, and now this is public information on his one of his social medias or something along the lines because my, my brother showed me. But now he has devolved from clearly, like clearly this kid, like, you know, he's a social reject, whatever. Clearly at a very young age, he was indulging in pornography. He just, you can, it, you know the kids that you can just tell what they're doing at home all day. It's this weird, degenerate, sad activities. And it evolved into fat Bowser, Bowser from Mario, uh, fetish. So he would like post stuff like that. And that's like now his persona and he goes to he actually partakes in like furry conventions and stuff uh it's very interesting uh that what also worries me about the idea of that is that i'm sure like if you get involved in like these communities i guarantee there is a lot of grooming going on because a lot of these young kids like thinking they're furries or whatever are joining these communities and there's also a lot of weirdo fucking old 30 40 year old men that also think they're a horse and they're talking to these underage kids it's wild because for most of these people it's pretty hush hush um however for furries they're just fully out about it they have conventions about it and it's kind of become not accepted but just kind of something we all acknowledge from afar and be like that's weird but we don't do a lot of thinking about it now me personally today i think i spent about five to ten minutes actually thinking about it and i really just realized how bad it is, and what it could mean for society as a whole. I mean, the idea that getting addicted and exposed to these adult films and adult content at a young age, it is literally infinite online. That's one of those addictions that other addictions, you know, if I was addicted to heroin, I can only buy so much heroin, and I can only, only take so much heroin before I die, same with alcohol, same with a lot of these other things. Whereas for porn, yeah, you have like time commitments and maybe you have a job or whatever, but it's an infinite source on the internet. You know, that's why infinite source of human, of animation, of animal drawings, I guess, is what they get off to. And it's only getting worse in society because, especially in the West, our society is becoming more and more over-sexualized and accepting of these things, you know? It's mind-blowing that now basically mainstream ideology aligns with saying and teaching to the young kids that this is all normal, it's okay, everybody does it, while completely ignoring the negative effects on your social interaction abilities, the negative effects on your dopamine, which is your drive and motivation for life. I mean, these guys are just shooting loads off into the thin air and their brain part of their brain thinks that they are reproductive reproducing reproducing and another part subconsciously knows that they're a cuck watching other people do the thing that they wish they were doing and they're just this sad lonely pathetic spectator and uh so, yeah so society is just been like that that's okay that's epic and cool and everyone does it and you should do it and there's no downside of it um, but for us, based, red-pilled, Chad, uh, I want to say woke, but the word woke has kind of been ruined by the left, but like woke in terms of you're actually like enlightened and know what's good. We know that this is a control mechanism. Um, we know who runs these companies, uh, both mainstream companies, porn pornography companies, and just the things that control the mainstream narrative. And this is just a means of controlling the men in the West, because if you have all these men who are essentially castrating themselves one to eight times a day with this fairy tale simulation acting porn, um, they're so much easier to control because they're so much more complacent. Now, while I do think it's bad and I want to help everyone break free of that addiction, it's also for people like us, I mean, if you're watching my content, you're definitely more on the fitness, masculine, self-improvement grind, <laughs> the competition isn't that bad. You know, when 99% of men are addicted to porn and they might spend an hour plus a day doing that, they might spend an hour plus a day with some video games, watching some random sports, 
Uh, it's, it's pretty motivational if you have uh, entrepreneur type goals or just goals of becoming successful and high value in general. Nevertheless, I do want to help as many people as I can. And I would love, you know, if I, if I could magically become, I want to say president, but the pres- even the president's controlled to an extent. But if I somehow had the power to like pass laws and I could somehow make a law that says, hey, no more rubbing your pee pee to internet naked women. I, I probably would definitely consider that. And the thing is, is when you say stuff like that, a lot of the ultra conservative or libertarian guys are like, no, no, government involvement is bad. But the in the West, currently, the, well, what's the word? The opposing is the current, meaning the government is propagating and supporting masturbation and pornography, as well as all of the mainstream music. I mean, watch a music video on YouTube of like a female rapper and you will be astonished about what they let them get away with compared to what they would let a normal creator get away with. It's literally soft corn pornography on YouTube, a site that young children are on. I mentioned in my, I briefly mentioned in my no fat video on the main channel, Kenny's Fit, that uh, Anaconda, Nicki Minaj Anaconda really messed me up as, as a kid. And I, I do remember watching that and then taking my laptop or maybe my phone, it might have been my laptop though, to the bathroom and uh, doing the dirty deed. And that dirty deed was done over and over and over for a long period of my life. This slippery slope is sliding. That's a tongue twister for you, but notice how I said it perfectly. The slippery slope is sliding. And what if there's more groups like this that start to pop up of basically publicized, socially accepted to an extent fetishes? Because that's all furry stuff is. It's a fetish. And somehow they were able to create a whole community out of it, which is even more... I don't want to say dangerous, but it's like toxic for the people involved because, you know, you are on your own and you have this addiction and maybe you, maybe, you know, it's kind of bad or you're like, dang, I do this all the time. Maybe you don't, whatever. Either way, you're just overindulging in this, doing all the furry porn, rubbing your wee wee nonsense. But then you find a community of people who all do the exact same thing and all believe it's great and amazing. And this is how everyone should be. Good luck escaping that. I, I, I hurt for these people. I really do. And I think... I think this, and I hate to say I think this, and I worry that this is... Stuff like that is disproportionately affecting people who are exposed to pornography at a very young age. That's why these extreme fetishes develop um it's just bad it's just uh that that, kind of boils down the whole video furries are bad so if you think furries are bad or if you think furries are epic please drop a comment below my last video was a 15 minute meditation and I implore you to go try that out if you watched on the main channel the NoFap video about how meditation is epic and helps with NoFap, it also just helps with everything about life in general. My mental health has skyrocketed, skyrocketed, skyrocketed ever since I implemented steady meditation, practically 10 to 15 minutes every single day. Go check that out. Also, just letting you know, uh, kind of rewarding you for watching the video so long. I already have one of the four chapters fully done, but guys, I'm creating a fully comprehensible fitness course. The idea of this is it's kind of a one-stop shop. You purchase the course, it's a one-time payment, you enroll in it, and then you have access to, it's going to be a lot of stuff. It's going to be a lot of me explaining nutrition, training, supplementation, um, even more deep into the nuances of all that. And I'm very excited for it because I'm very excited for the people that really need it, getting their hands on it, and then months down the line, hitting me up and like, showing me their progress or telling me their testimonial. That's really exciting. Um, Let me know what you think of these little rant videos. Kenster is interesting because it started as just a stream and I kind of make videos out of the streams and then I upload them to Kenster. But now 
and and those granted those did get more views those would get a couple thousand views uh, they were definitely more algorithmically beneficial for me but I do like just talking to the camera like this because I don't really get to do this on anything I don't have a podcast and everything on Kenny's fit is very optimized and highly edited I put a lot of work into it and it a content like this wouldn't wouldn't thrive on there so I'm just experimenting it with Kenster but also I'm posting meditations and if I do have any videos or reactions or whatever from live streams which I haven't streamed in a while but if I did they would also go on this channel so just let me know what you think in general about the content on this channel and uh, what you want to see what you like and what you dislike because that's going to give me the needed input to put the right content on here that the audience is going to react to and when the audience reacts well to a piece of content then YouTube shows it to more people and it helps me grow and become successful, which is what I'm trying to do and motivate you all to do as well. Thank you for watching. That's really all I got.